Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about adding a document editor component to your app. So let's say you are building some app and I have some demo app here, what I call Proposal Studio. So you can imagine that send documents to your clients. Maybe you're proposing a project, for example, maybe some kind of business letter. Basically, I have some templates here and let me actually zoom in a bit and then I can change the formatting here or just normal. I can add tables if I want or images or links. I can change the header or footer and so much more. But the important thing here is that I'm programmatically changing this document component. So what you see here is actually a separate component. This part here is being housed inside an application here, but you still have programmatic control over what happens here. Now the document editor itself also comes with its own control. So of course I can make this a link or I can add images, I can undo, redo, I can open or new or new one, completely new. Uh, I can change the styling here of course, so I can make it bold or italic, change the colors, right? Also of course, uh, Control Z will go back everything, uh, change the alignment. Right, so the options that you're used to from editing documents are all in here. The component that I'm using here is actually coming from Sync Fusion. They are also today's sponsor. And I've worked with them in the past. I've used some of their other components as well. And they're really powerful components. It's a really high quality set of components that they offer in their component suite, not only for React, but that's what we're looking at in this video. And it allows you to very easily edit a very powerful component to your app, right? Including all of these options, tracking changes, right? So if I make a change here, we can accept or reject that in case you have maybe, right? Maybe you have some workflow with multiple people um, or maybe your users, right? Maybe you're building it for yourself or for your users, both of that is possible. And I can also do things like restrict the editing. So if I wanna make it read only, for example, that's possible here or add some other protections, maybe more fine grained control. Uh, we can start enforcing that with passwords here. We can also add form fields. So if you do want to add a text input or a checkbox or drop down, that is also possible here. And so much more, we'll take a look at it in a second. And so much more, I'll show you that in the video, but, but let's actually start with spinning up a completely new app and seeing how we can incorporate this document editor into it, install it and basically get started with it. All right, so I have a brand new folder here, which is completely empty. Let's actually get started with creating a new React Vite app and we will pick React here, just going with the standard options here. Okay, so it's running now, let's open it up. Okay, so we have the boilerplate here. Let me actually remove some of that boilerplate. We wanna get started with our document editor actually. So let me just remove all of this. Okay, so it's now an empty page, but we still have some default styling here as well. I will remove that and I will add some of my own styling because I like that blue background color. Okay, so now we have a blank page here essentially. How do we add this? document editor on the page. Okay, so Syncfusion has documentation on this. We are using React here, but you can see it's also supported in all these other uh, frameworks as well. Now, what you need to know is that we can run the document edit editor all client side, but for some things you do need some server side dependencies. So if you do wanna have uh, these features, they do require server side capability here. Okay, but we will keep it client side here. Let's actually copy the command here so we can install the necessary packages, npm install the React document editor right here. Then we can add the CSS for the component. You can do that in the CSS file itself or in the TSX file. And then we want the actual component here on the page. So let me actually import this. And if we do that, let's see what we have. All right, so now you can see, I see, well, an editor here, of course, it's not the correct size. So by default in our example, they show a fixed height. Typically you will have some kind of container element around it, which will determine the height. So it's, it's probably a bit more common to just take up whatever size the parent element will eventually decide for it. All right, and you can see we wanna enable a toolbar here. Now, the way that Syncfusion components typically work is that you have to inject certain modules to enable them. So we're not unnecessarily bloating up our components here with things that we don't need. So the things that you do need, you just have to add them as a surface here. So in this case, we do wanna add a toolbar here. We just use the inject component and then use toolbar. Make sure you import it from the right package. So. For now, they're all coming from this package here. If we do all of that, we will see this on the page. So it's a bit too big, but we'll work on this in a second. The other thing that you will see is some kind of license notification here. So Syncfusion has a paid offering. You do need to pay for the license, but they do have a free trial as of recording. And they also seem to have a community license. So if you qualify for that, 
that may be really interesting to you. Now, if you log into the dashboard, you can you can get an API key. So you do get access to a 30 day free trial. And then you can also remove this message. So what I can do here is I can go to main.tsx and here I can import the register license function from Syncfusion's package here and then just use the API key that you get from the dashboard. OK, so then if we go back, that message is gone and we can see our editor here with a toolbar here. Now, it's not styled properly yet because we don't have anything else on the page. So I'm adding some parent elements here and some other UI on the page as well. So you can see it's sitting inside some container now. And so then we are able to make it fit into that uh, parent element. And then we also have some other things now in the UI here, which is very typical if you're building apps. But before we look at that, I want to show you these other options that we have. So we have a toolbar now. So basically what you see here, we can customize this. We can decide what the toolbar should look like. Okay. So if you want to have a header or footer, right? So what I showed you in the intro, but for some of those things like track changes, you do need to enable that. So here, for example, enable track changes, also enable commenting. Now there are many options here. So if you're using TypeScript, you can do type inference here and then you will get all the props here. This will help you customize it to get ex exactly what you want. But you can see it's it's very powerful, it's very comprehensive, and you have way more options here under document editor settings as well. So if you do want to enable a ruler, for example, that you also see this, that you can do that. Way more options, right? Allow drag and drop, a maximum columns and rows, and also some settings for printing. When you do that, you will get this component here. And if you're putting it inside a container element, you can make it fit in the right place inside your application. You get all of those powerful features here pretty much out of the box or with some very easy customization. But of course, in an app, we often want to programmatically make changes here or interact with it. So now, for example, if I click on this meeting notes, you can see it's actually changing the contents here of the document as well. So how do you actually load new content in here? How does that work. So the way that it works is when the user clicks one of those other proposals in the templates, I'm running this function that we'll call open SFDT. So this is the file format that Syncfusion is using for this editor. It's their own. It will it helps with performance. And what you basically need to do is need to get a reference to the document editor and you can call the open method on there with that SFDT, basically a JSON string. And that will allow you to display exactly what you want here as content. For things like programmatically changing uh, the styling here, for example, or marking it as a heading, you just use the reference to the document and then you can use editor and apply a particular style. You can also insert a table and if you use type reference you can see we can do many other things like all of these options are available for us to programmatically manipulate the document editor so a lot of the things that you can do in the ui you can also do uh, programmatically from other parts of your application you just need to get a reference to the actual document so i'm using the you use ref hook here and we can actually use a type from syncfusion actually but i just have to Mark, I just have to use this container ref and I can go to that component and just mark that as the ref here. So then you have your reference to that component, right? You can allow users to open a file, few pages and work with page numbers. Those things that you're used to from document editing that is available here. And you can also do collaborative editing with the editor here. So for example, I can share this with somebody else. So I get a URL here. So now I have another instance open on the right side. So if I change something in either one, let's say I add a bunch of exclamation marks here. And now if I go to this one instance, you can see those have been added here. You can see there is a marker here showing that somebody else is here as well, right? If I remove the things here on the right side, you can see it actually updates on the left side as well. How cool is that? So this collaborative editing is also possible here. There are many ways that you can customize it. I highly recommend that you check out these demos that Syncfusion has prepared for you. If you go to their website, you can see their demos here. You can use the link in the description to go there. And here they have some wonderful examples and probably something really close to what you actually want as well. Here they have an example with the default uh, functionalities, right? So the typical things that you're used to, you can style them. It's called, they have ribbon UI, you can, uh, which you can toggle here if you want. All right, so the styling, pick the font, the user can make it look like what they want to. Now we know that you can programmatically interact with it, but you can even make it about specific pieces of data. So for example, here I do have, for example, John in the document. Here, if I change it, if I add an R, right? And I click on bind form UI data to the document, you can see that now the name has been updated here. You have really granular control 
over the specific pieces of data in the document that should be controlled perhaps by some control outside the component. And it can also be the other way around. So if the user does, for example, change uh, Baker Street into Baker Streets, and so now I have updated this here in the document and maybe i want to display that address somewhere else in my app so then i can actually bind the document data to the form ui here so now you can see it's been updated here so you can drive the actual data from both places uh, so if you want to have like a grid layout for a list and then display the actual document in a model it's pretty common as well and if you have some kind of workflow where multiple people need to collaborate or review each other's work you may want to have comments and track changes so we can add comments here so you can see somebody has left a comment here and I can reply to it so you can get these threads here right along the document as well and go through them like this so you can really build out more sophisticated workflows that people may have as well all right so if we want to keep track of the changes that somebody makes we can enable track changes as, as we've seen so now if I try to change this to test you can see this is being tracked over here we can restrict the editing so we can add protection uh, and use password so if you're using the ribbon UI option you can customize that as well so we can hide or show certain things and customize that. Now your users can save the files, of course, right? I can change something and then control S, but you may actually want to auto save the user's work. So if they do unexpectedly leave the your app or site that they don't lose their work. So here, for example, um, if I change something to, well, the price should actually be an eight here. You can see that pretty quickly it's auto save. Right? Now, if I do control S, I'm actually saving it as that sfdt file so that's the json essentially i can then open that up here as well right so, right so of course you can open those now you can decide what is being displayed in the toolbar by the way so if you only want to have a very clean simple layout you can just specify for example uh, that only new open and undo should be available and right? if you do want to have all of those other things as well you can customize that you can programmatically change that here you can even customize the color picker so if you want like a palette or more like a picker where it's more gradual like this even that is possible and of course if your users want to print it that is available here as well okay so of course that is possible now it could be that you, they just want to print but maybe they do want to export as a pdf file let's say right or some other format so i can do that here as well and then if i open this up you can see my pdf file and right? so we can format the text here in colors and and if you have charts those can be rendered in here as well and there are a bunch of other demos so i would so i would recommend that you check those out and if you like one that you see they have the full source they have the source code here ready to go so that's the easiest way to get started i think but i think you get the point which is that this is a very powerful document editor that you can very easily add to your own application so i would say check out sync fusion you can find a link in the description thanks for watching hope it helps you out have a nice day bye